All right, hi guys, it's Miss Arnes. I'm going to be talking to you guys about the basics of radiation really quick. You need to take notes while you watch this video. Please do it by hand. I know some students like to take notes on their computer, but science shows us that you remember better if you write it out by hand. So that's why I'm asking you to do that, please. Let's go ahead and get started. So when you hear the word radiation, a lot of people think of, of I guess, like negative stuff, like radiation is bad. But the crazy thing is that radiation mostly is not bad. It's mostly really good and essential for life. So something like um, photosynthesis is only possible because of radiation. Solar energy comes to the earth and plants use it to make food. And then we eat plants and then feed plants to things that we eat. So we really need it. It's essential. So I want to kind of break it down on a physics level. Physics is maybe one of the hardest sciences to do in high school because it requires you to think conceptually a lot. That means that you can't really see some of these things that we're going to be talking about in person and you don't really interact with them often. Um, so it gets a little confusing. It's not like we can just go into the science lab and do a chemical reaction that kind of talks about what we're going to be looking at. And that's especially true when it comes to radiation in the form of nuclear radiation or radiation that is harmful. So let's go ahead and just get a radiation definition. So go ahead and write radiation on your page. Here's the definition. It is when energy travels as a wave. So radiation is when energy travels as a wave. That's what you want to write down. There's a bunch of different types of radiation. I have not listed all of them here. The ones that are in orange, you don't really need to write down. Gravitational radiation was re recently um, discovered. We have gravitational waves now. And so um, this is a, an artist's rendition on the picture of what that kind of looks like. And the waves in gravitational waves are literally bending and smushing space-time, which is pretty cool. So that's a pretty complicated conceptual thing to think about but it's really cool and we recently discovered it. Einstein actually knew it would exist and he predicted it a long time ago, but then we recently discovered our first gravitational waves. And so that's like a whole new branch of science now, pretty cool. Acoustic radiation is gonna be when you're vibrating something. Acoustic, you think of sound, and that's kind of what this is. Seismic waves, which are like those from earthquakes. Ultrasound, if you ever have to go to get an ultrasound, they literally are sending little waves into you and then, and then registering how it looks when it comes back, like how is it bouncing back, and then they can look inside of your body that way. The other two types of radiation that we're gonna talk a lot more about in this presentation are particle radiation and electromagnetic radiation. So um, I put ionizing and non-ionizing right here, but those really shouldn't be under electromagnetic. So sorry about that. You don't have to write them down. Just write down this orange stuff because those are some of the types, and then we're going to talk about these in more detail. Okay, so particle radiation is our first adventure in radiation here. And particle radiation is... Um, when particles with mass produced by radioactive decay carry energy in the form of a wave. So there's a few different types, alpha, beta, neutron radiation. These are just three types. There's even more than this. Um, this picture right here, this is an interesting story. At my old house, I had a roommate who worked at Los Alamos, and he was our roommate. So he would go to Los Alamos, and then he would come back to Las Cruces. And one time at his lab in Los Alamos that he was doing all of his um, his research in, somebody spilled some... Um, beta radiation. So like they literally spilled and contaminated his workspace. They didn't report it. So he went to work and he got basically all of these particles all over him and all over his backpack. 
he went home and this was right before he was coming to stay with us so it was like right after spring break or something like that i don't remember exactly but um he came home and he took a shower and then he got in bed and um the next morning the department of energy was at our house scanning things and confiscating them because they had too high of radiation so all those particles were all over his um stuff so this is a bag of the contaminated material that they took from his home they replaced all of it and um they even he had a mustang and they had to um, basically take his Mustang away and replace the seat in his car because it had too much radiation. He had to pee in this um, container and keep it in the fridge for like, I don't know, a week or something like that because they were trying to see how much radiation he had um, ingested and gotten inside of his body. So it was a pretty interesting um a pretty interesting thing. So this is a type of radiation that's not commonly talked about at all. Um, but it is going to be um, the case in Chernobyl that we see some results of particle radiation because it is the result of radioactive decay. And if you don't know what that means, radioactive decay is when an atom spontaneously changes into another type of atom. We don't know exactly why it happens, when it happens, like we don't know all the details, but we know that it occurs. And when that happens, it releases these particles that end up being, um, some of them, like neutron radiation, is like really, 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 really bad. Okay, and harmful. Okay, so electromagnetic radiation we're going to have to talk about for a little bit because it's a pretty big deal. Electromagnetism is one of the four fundamental forces. So we interact with this on a daily basis. And um, radiation is waves or this type of radiation, are waves that are the result of interaction with the electromagnetic field. And so things that you associate with electricity or with magnetism are all going to be part of this. You've heard of the electromagnetic spectrum, which we're going to look at in a second. But for a minute, I want to visualize fields. So the electromagnetic field is all around you, but you can't see it or touch it. So something to kind of get an idea, kind of be able to visualize what that means, would be in a swimming pool. So this little girl is jumping into this swimming pool, and it's going to be, if she, when she's underwater, it'll be above her and below her, and she's interacting with it. So she's pushing the water around. She's going to cause waves in the water, and those are going to move throughout the pool and um, if, eventually like dissipate. Um, but she is interacting with it. Is she part of the pool? No, but she's interacting with that pool. So the pool in this case is kind of like a field and all kinds of different matter are going to interact with electromagnetic fields and those um, cause all of the electromagnetic radiation and waves that we um, experience in our life. So the next thing to write down is that a photon is the force carrier of EMR. And EMR stands for electromagnetic radiation. So photons, I thought this was a made up particle when I was in high school because like literally we never talked about it. And when I was in college, I was like, I thought that was like a sci-fi thing, but photons are real and they are the force carriers of the electromagnetic radiation. So I want you to be familiar with that term. This is the electromagnetic spectrum. Um, when I started teaching, which was like, I guess eight years ago, when you looked up electromagnetic spectrum on the internet, you would get um, pictures of the electromagnetic spectrum. Now what you get is a whole bunch of propaganda about radiation harming people. So I was like super weirded out by that and I couldn't really find one that I liked. So be careful when you're looking on the internet. Um, I will give you an electromagnetic uh, spectrum that you can use reliably because it's based on science instead of on, I don't know propaganda but it shows you the wavelength the longer the wavelength and so we are literally talking about a wave that is the size of a soccer field here all the way down to waves that are smaller than the nucleus of an atom and the more um, small that you go okay the smaller you go in wavelength basically the more dangerous those waves get and that's important in the case of radiation because these are going to be the waves that are ionizing Okay, a couple more things about electromagnetic radiation is that all electromagnetic radiation moves at the speed of light. So you need to write that down. It doesn't matter if it's a microwave 
or a gamma ray, it will still move at the same speed. That speed of light, which you don't have to write down this first number, this is it in meters per second, written out completely. Thankfully, we have scientific notation, so we can make this a lot shorter and just call it 2.998 times 10 to the eighth power meters per second. So that is the speed of light, and I do want you to write that down as the speed of light. So it takes light, which is the fastest thing we know about in the whole entire universe, 1.3 light seconds to get to um, the earth. But in order for us to see the light from the sun, we actually only see it eight minutes after it left the sun. So all the light you see on the earth is actually old because it was produced by the sun at least eight minutes ago. Isn't that pretty crazy? And then of course, if we're looking at light that's further out in the universe, um, one of the closest stars to us is 4.4 light years away. That's the distance that it takes light to travel in a whole entire year 4.4 times. So that's the closest star. And um, so we space travel is a lot more complicated than we originally thought just because it takes so much time to get anywhere. Space is so big. The variation in the electromagnetic spectrum, because remember we have things from wavelength all the way over here to this teeny little wavelength over here. Those are going to be in these, these properties like wavelength, amplitude, and energy. And you're going to learn more about all of those later on. But I just want you to know that that's where the variation in electromagnetic radiation comes from. Okay, so now we've got to talk about non-ionizing radiation. So what I'd like you to write down is the definition for non-ionizing radiation is um, radiation that does not ionize matter. Okay. And for now, it's okay if you don't know what ionize means. We're going to talk about that in a second. But you do want to know that it does not harm human tissue. So that's what to put under the second bullet point there. And some examples are electromagnetic waves from radio waves to visible waves. But we actually have some electromagnetic radiation that will be ionizing and actually can har cause harm to human tissue. Another example are those acoustic waves. So this is what to put on the last bullet. So this is a seismic wave. And can an earthquake harm you? Yes, it most certainly can. But it's not because of the waves itself. It's because, like, stuff falls on you. You're in a building and then, you know, you get crushed. I can't imagine that. That sounds terrifying. But we don't really have earthquakes here that are detectable. Okay, so in order to talk about ionizing radiation, we need to take a step back and look at some background information. So a neutral atom is going to be an atom with the same number of protons, neutrons, and electrons. So a neutral atom, like carbon, right here in this first picture, and you can even draw a little picture of this. Remember, atoms don't really look like this. They're a lot more complicated, but this is how we draw them so that we can understand it with like our brains. So the protons and the neutrons are in the middle, then the electrons are in this cloud on the outside, and we usually draw them in these orbital shells, but that's not actually how they look in real life, so it's kind of misleading. But if you have six neutrons, remember neutrons are not charged, they don't have a charge at all, so they basically don't change the charge of the atom. But protons have a positive charge, and electrons have a negative charge. So if you have the same number, like if you have plus 6 minus 6, that equals 0, that's neutral. And that's how we have a neutral atom. That's what this is right here. Protons in an element cannot change, except in the case of nuclear decay. You have the same number of protons in every single carbon in the universe. You can't change the number of carbons. They define the element itself. But you can change the number of protons and the number I mean the number of electrons and the number of neutrons. So let's talk about what those are called. Okay, so the second one word here that you need to define is isotope. Isotope is an atom with a different number of neutrons than protons. So in this case with carbon-12, and you can draw a picture of this too, carbon-12 has six neutrons and six protons, so it's called carbon-12. And that would be plus six minus six neutral carbon-12 right here, okay? So we have six protons and six neutrons. That's the same amount, so it is not an isotope. But here we have this extra neutron. We added an extra one. 
So now we have 7 plus 6 protons, so 7 neutrons plus 6 protons equals 13, so we call that carbon-13, and that is an isotope. The isotopes are also the name of a baseball team in New Mexico, and it's named after this because of Los Alamos, um, important to New Mexico history. Okay, let's talk about the last one, an ion. Here's the definition. An ion is an atom with a different number of electrons than protons. So usually ions form when atoms are hanging out next to each other and one of them wants to get rid of an electron and one of them wants to take an electron. That's the case with sodium and chlorine which makes sodium chloride which is table salt NaCl. Here's what happens. The sodium has this extra electron that it wants to get rid of because then it will feel stable. Chlorine has seven in its outer layer so it wants to steal one more. So the, the electron will just basically skip over here, sodium's happy to give it, chlorine's happy to take it, and then what you get is that sodium doesn't have the same number of protons and electrons anymore. It used to have 11 protons and 11 electrons, plus 11 minus 11 equals 0, so it was neutral, but now it has plus 11 minus 10, which leaves it with a charge of positive one. And chlorine, I think, is element number 16 or 17. I can't remember off the top of my head. But when it takes that extra electron, it has one more electron than proton, so it gets a negative charge. So ions are charged particles. They either have a positive or a negative charge. Sometimes there's um, ions that can steal like two electrons, and then they're going to have a negative charge of two, so negative two would be their charge, but in this case it's just a simple example with one electron being transferred. Okay, that's what an ion is, a charged particle. It has a different number of electrons than protons, so it's not neutral anymore. It's either positive or negative. Okay, when we talk about ionizing radiation, this is what we're going to write down. Radiation with so much energy that it knocks electrons off of molecules and atoms, charging them, basically making them into ions. Why is that bad? Well, it's going to harm human tissue. So I know you haven't taken chemistry yet, but chemis chemicals are made and formed when elements are either sharing electrons or when they're like transferring them from one atom to another like we just did with sodium chloride. So when you knock off these electrons, the atoms and the molecules, they can't behave the way they normally do. And that can be really bad. Like, for example, if that happens in your DNA, then you can have your DNA messed up. If it's just happening to, say, your skin cells, then you can get burns on your skin cells. But they'll be so damaged that they can't be repaired in some cases. When it's touching something that is not necessarily human tissue, for example, air, ionizing radiation can cause it to get this, like, glowing and to change colors. So ionizing radiation is going to be the kind that is harmful and there's a couple of different types. So um, particle radiation, a lot of that is going to be considered ionizing and then some parts of the electromagnetic spectrum are going to be considered as well, like gamma radiation for example. So I hope this gives you some basic information about ionite or about radiation. I'm sorry this video is long. How come I can't make a short video? It's because I talk too much. But I hope you guys have a beautiful day. Take notes, upload your pictures so you can get your points.